Mason. Brought to you by Tide. T-I-D-E. Tide. Procter and Gamble's new wash day miracle. Harry Mason, the famous character created by Earl Stanley Gardner, dramatized by Irving Bendig. Harry Mason, defender of human rights, champion of all those who seek justice. There's some pretty wonderful new soaps. I know it. And some absolutely sensational new sudsing products. I know that too, Bob. But I also know that Tide gets clothes cleaner than all of them. Yes, and I know it too, Franny. Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap, any other suds, any other washing product known. That's because Procter & Gamble's Tide not only leaves clothes free from dirt, it removes dingy soap film too. Yet, with all this extraordinary cleaning power, Tide is safe. Truly safe for all your washable colors. What's more, Tide actually brightens soap-dulled colors. And in hardest water, Tide gets sheets, pillowcases, and towels whiter than any other washing product known. Keeps them white, too, week after week. Never turns them yellow. And all this goes for your whole family wash, too. So when you choose a washing product, remember this. No soap, no other suds, no other washing product known will get your clothes as clean as Procter & Gamble's Tide. Countermeasures involve Elise Scott, the girl who is so amazingly like Helen Henderson. And as you know, psychologist Dr. Marilyn Irma Schneider. We're going to visit Walter in a few moments, hear more of his strange and terrible scheme, but first, to Perry Mason, who's making plans of his own. A moment ago, Perry, accompanied by his secretary, Della Street, walked into the office of Homicide Lieutenant Tragg, where we hear... <coughs> you two sit down any place. <coughs> Lieutenant Tragg? Yeah. Would you like to make me very, very grateful? Sure, if I don't have to move. Now, would you say it's all right if I open a window? No, oh, I'll do it for you. You're too warm. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a gar smoke. Really? Oh. Is it that bad? Oh. I realize it was so thick. <coughs> no, in a way, it's a shame to open it, Trag. Mm. Huh? Think of the cigars you'd save. Yes, yeah, so all you have to do now is inhale. You don't need to light another one. Uh, very funny. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks. I'm certainly grateful. And it's... Uh, not only cigar smoke you smell. Oh? Yeah. Uh, the deputy commissioner just paid me a visit. Oh, how nice. Yeah, nice. What you smell is my hide burning. <laughs> Trouble, huh? Plenty. All upset about no progress on Golick's murder. Oh, but couldn't you... Couldn't I tell the commissioner the case is about to break, that in a few hours we're going to arrest the killer, and the killer is probably the most important crook in the country? I could not. Must have been quite a temptation. Mm, it was. Probably would have been safe to tell him. Probably. Trag feels that the promise is promised, Ellen. Yeah, and, well, I think this deputy commissioner would have kept quiet, but, you know, guys talk uh, since we're this close to where we're going. He used very good judgment, Trag. Huh? We're all set? Grand jury meets in the morning. Good. So, after you and I iron out a few details... My men are already, Mason. We'll pick up Walter Bott as soon as I get a flash. The indictment has been returned. Good. And in line with that... Yeah? You have Bott followed? Well, it's been a loose surveillance. Mm-hmm. We've kept up with him pretty well. We didn't want to make him suspicious. No, I understand. However, in the morning... Yeah? You can have your men start to move in. Expecting something, Perry? No, no, not expecting, but... Uh, Bart has interests all over the country. 
Okay. And we don't want him leaving on a business trip just before an indictment is returned. Uh-huh. All right, Mason, I'll pass the word. Well, there's another angle, Trag. You know, of course, that Helen Henderson will most likely <clears throat> have to appear before the grand jury. Yeah, I've been thinking about her. Uh-huh. Couldn't you present her sworn statement, keep her out of sight? Well, I'm going to try, but I'm afraid that's a little like your experience with the deputy commissioner. What? Helen's deposition saying that she saw Bot commit murder might be enough, but I think they'll want to hear it from her own mouth. And when you come right down to it, once we go before the grand jury, the cat is out of the bag. Mm. There'll be no chance for secrecy then. So I don't want Bot to have even an hour's notice if we can help it. Well, there won't be any delay at my end. Good. I want to get rolling as fast as possible. Of course, Helen will have a stronger effect on the jury than any statement. Mm. Yeah, I guess you're right. She's got to be there. Yeah, she has to be there, and she has to be protected. Now, I'll need another detail of your men, Trag. All right, how many and where? Well, use the detail at Trainer Street. They can escort Helen to and from the courtroom, but you'll need at least one more detail. The cars in front and cars behind. The whole treatment, huh, Perry? Yes. Now, as for the schedule. The jury meets at 9.30. Our party should arrive at the East Corridor at 9.28. Yeah, I got it. The detail you've posted in the building can take over then. All right. Oh, you sound like you're planning a military campaign. We can't take chances. Bot will make a move, Della. I should say not. So, can you think of anything else, Trag? Mm, no, that should cover it. Della, think of anything we haven't covered? No. No, I can't, Perry. Okay, Trag, you handle the details. We'll see you later. And so as Perry Mason and Homicide Lieutenant Trag complete their final arrangements, lawyer Joseph Gerhardt Frederick Camp leads a tall, angular woman into Walter Bot's luxurious apartment. Now... They enter the vestibule. You'll have to wait here for a moment, Dr. Schneider. I'll tell them we've arrived. All right. Ah, Joseph. She's outside, Walter. Dr. Schneider? Mm. Good. Bring her in. All right. But, Walter. Yeah? You won't like her. She's a cold fish. Bring her in, Joseph. All right, Dr. Schneider. He'll see you now. Just walk right up to the desk, Doctor. So, you are Marilyn Irma Schneider, Ph.D., I believe. I don't know your name. That's true. But I assume that you're responsible for my freedom. To be scientifically accurate, my money is responsible. Even more accurately, about $25,000 of your money, if Mr. Kemp is to be believed. To say nothing of what you paid Mr. Kemp. It all comes to a sizable amount, Doctor. Well, I don't say thank you. What? I said I don't say thank you. Well, the boy... Wait, Joseph. It really doesn't matter, Doctor, but now that you've made a point of it, why not? You're no philanthropist. Analyzing my character, Doctor. Looking at facts. Psychologists deal in facts. Mm. And the fact is obvious that I'm expected to repay you. Well, didn't Mr. Camp explain? In a way. But I wanted you to know that I understand the arrangement perfectly. You affected my release. Therefore, I am in your debt. I'll work to discharge my obligation. But you're telling me you have no feeling of gratitude. I do not. You've bought my services. That's all. You know what I want you to do, Doctor? In a way. Camp said something about training a girl to serve as a double. And doesn't that interest you? It might. Under certain conditions. Under certain conditions, it could be an interesting experiment. A very interesting experiment. But... Dr. Schneider, I believe when you fully understand, you'll be very grateful. Yes. I doubt that Mr. Camp explained the extent of the task we're going to put before you. Uh, just the outline, Walter. I see. Dr. Schneider, you're correct. Basically, ours is a business relationship. I repaid the, uh... A rather sizable amount you embezzled. Mr. Camp had the charges against you dropped. And in return, we expect... You have a task to perform, but quite aside from the business aspect, I think you'll be very pleased with this job. Oh? 
Why? Because I'm offering you the greatest experiment of your career. An opportunity an experimental psychologist has never had before. There are no limitations. No limitations. I want you to remake a personality, to remake a life. Your task will be to rip away the existing patterns of reaction and thinking, to rebuild, to recreate a totally different human being. I'm offering you clay, Dr. Schneider. Living clay for you to mold. Now, are you interested? Yes. Yes, I'm very interested. But... What is it? It could be dangerous. Dangerous? To whom? The clay. Oh. You're speaking of fundamentals. Structure of the psyche. It could be... Dangerous to the clay. If you meant what you said. If you meant what you said. Dr. Schneider, I always mean what I say. It's understood that I'll have a free hand. You will. And the danger? Danger? I don't care as long as the job gets done. Do you care about the danger to the clay? No. I thought not. There's something else, too. Yes. I've changed my mind. Oh. You were right. Now that I do understand, I am grateful. Of course, the clay Walter Bott and Dr. Schneider referred to is Elise Scott. The girl Walter Bott once molded and trained in the image of Helen Henderson. So it's obvious that Perry Mason's precautions for his witness's safety are vitally important. But will they be enough? You better listen to us on Monday. With so many really good washing products being used, a woman has to be given a mighty good reason before she'll switch to a new one. Well, we think we can give you the best reason in the world for changing to Tide. Listen, Procter & Gamble's Tide will get your clothes cleaner than any soap, any other suds, any other washing product known. Tide leaves clothes free from dirt and more. Tide removes dingy soap film, too. Yet, with all this amazing cleaning power, Tide is truly safe for all your washable colors. In fact, Tide actually brightens soap dull colors. And in hardest water, Tide gets white things whiter than any other washing product known. So try Tide. Watch those suds billow up. Notice how different they look and feel. And see your family wash at its cleanest best. No soap, no other suds, no other washing product known will get your clothes as clean as Tide. Tide gets clothes cleaner than all of them. the famous character created by Earl Stanley Gardner, is brought to you by Tide, Procter and Gamble's amazing new discovery for your whole family wash. Try Tide yourself, and you too will agree you've never used anything like it. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. By Tide, T I D E, Tide, Procter and Gamble's new wash day miracle. Perry Mason, the famous character created by Earl Stanley Gardner, dramatized by Irving Bendig. Perry Mason, defender of human rights, champion of all those who seek justice. Oh, 
on now, Franny. There are some pretty wonderful new soaps. I know it. And some absolutely sensational new sudsing products. I know that too, Bob. But I also know that Tide gets clothes cleaner than all of them. Yes, and I know it too, Franny. Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap, any other suds, any other washing product known. That's because Procter & Gamble's Tide not only leaves clothes free from dirt, it removes dingy soap film too. Yet, with all this extraordinary cleaning power, Tide is safe, truly safe for all your washable colors. What's more, Tide actually brightens soap-dulled colors. And in hardest water, Tide gets sheets, pillowcases, and towels whiter than any other washing product known. Keeps them white, too, week after week. Never turns them yellow. And all this goes for your whole family wash, too. So when you choose a washing product, remember this. No soap, no other suds, no other washing product known will get your clothes as clean as Procter & Gamble's Tide. is all smiles. She nods a bright goodbye to Perry and Della as they detach themselves from the little marching group. Now as the lawyer and his secretary watch the group disappear around a turn in the corridor, Mason says, You spoke to Trag personally, Della? Mm-hmm. Told him that an indictment had been returned? Uh-huh. Well, what did he say? Oh, boy. <laughs> is that all? If he said any more, I didn't hear it because the good lieutenant hung up. Well, I guess he was in a hurry to get started. Very much of a hurry. He should be at Waterbots in no more than 15 minutes, Chief. Well, you're right. It has started. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's get back to the office, huh? All right. What's the matter, Della? I don't know. Reaction, maybe. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, here we've been working like mad to get enough evidence against Walter Bott. Working like mad to get started. And what do I do? Make a phone call to Trag and we are started. I guess that getting ready for something like this is always harder than the actual fight itself. Hmm? What's on your mind, Ella? Just told you. Mm-hmm. No, come on now. I know you better than that. What's on your mind? Helen. I thought so. She'll be safe. Even after Bart knows she saw him kill Goldie? Mr. Bart is going to jail. I Bart. know, Chief. And if it's humanly possible, I'm going to keep him in jail. Oh, in line with that. Yes? I wonder if it wouldn't be wise to phone the assistant district attorney. Oh, look at the clock. Hmm? 9.45. Noble won't be in the office until 10. Oh. Well, all right. Get back to our office. We'll phone him from there. Now, as Perry Mason and Dollar return to their office, and Helen Henderson, under heavy guard, returns to the house on Trainer Street where Mason is keeping her, as Homicide Lieutenant Tragg, armed with a murder warrant, approaches Walter Bott's apartment. Inside that apartment, we hear... Walter. Walter. Yes, Joseph. I came as soon as I heard. Oh, I know. The police are on their way with a warrant for my arrest. On a murder charge. So Huey informed me. And you sit there and play the piano? Joseph, now you're talking like truck. I uh, attended to several matters before I started to play. For example, these reports. We got them. Dr. Schneider... Well, she hasn't started training that girl yet. Well, not quite, but she's almost ready to start. Dr. Schneider is a methodical woman, Joseph. She believes in leaving as little to chance as I believe in leaving to chance. So, as these reports testify, before she starts making Miss Scott over in the image of Helen Henderson, she made a complete series of psychological tests. The 
example, this personality profile. What? Uh, outline of Miss Scott's character. Here we have the highlights and the low spots. The strengths and weaknesses of Miss Scott's character. Uh, very interesting, I'm sure, Walter. But don't you think we should discuss what's going to happen? While I'm gone? Truck has his instructions. Yes, yes, I know, but truck isn't qualified. Truck has taken care of things for a few hours before. A few hours? I said I don't believe in leaving things to chance. I thought certainly you knew. No, I couldn't get bail. Not just you, Walter. But anyone indicted for first-degree murder is denied bail. I'll get bail. I'll get bail just because I'm me. Uh, what are you getting at, Walter? Joseph, my arrest is going to surprise a lot of people. Some who thought I was too powerful to be touched are going to be shocked. That's true. After this shock will come a thought. Can't you guess what it'll be? Why, uh, I don't know, Walter. That is... You mean you don't like to say? Well... You don't like to say because some of my men are going to begin thinking... And wondering if Walter Bott is finished. They'll wonder when I'm arrested. And if I'm kept in jail like a common criminal, refused bail, the thinking could become more definite. Dangerous ideas, Joseph. Well... This is no time for my organization to be weakened by lack of faith in me. So? So I'll demonstrate that Walter Bott is just as powerful as he was before he was charged with murder. I'll get bail. But Walter, I will because I must. I can see the necessity, Walter. But you don't see how I'll arrange it? Frankly, I don't. It's all a matter of being methodical, not leaving anything to chance. Excuse me. Yes? Oh, send him in. Who is it, Walter? Dr. Leslie Bruce. Who? Heart specialist. You must have heard of him. The heart specialist? Of course, but uh, what's he doing here? He wants to do me a favor. Bruce, do you a favor? <laughs> Is it so incredible, Joseph? Well, uh, well, no, no, Walter, but uh, Bruce is a big man. That's Bruce, all right. Well, Mr. Bart, I... Oh, doctor, this is my lawyer, Joseph Kent. Oh, it's a pleasure, sir. I thought I was to see you in private, Mr. Bott. Oh, don't be concerned about camp, Doctor. I really... Mr. Camp is my trusted associate. This is a confidential matter. It will remain confidential. And as I said, I want to see you alone. You don't understand, Bruce. I trust Mr. Camp. In fact, I was just telling Mr. Camp why you're helping no. me. No, you can't. No, huh? Dr. Bruce. Can't I tell him about the investigation I had quashed for you, oh, so many years ago? That, uh, that slight irregularity in your narcotics inventory? You shouldn't have repeated that, Mr. Bott. Let's get down to business. Have you the preparation? Bruce! Yes, I brought it. What is this, Walter? You'll see. I have it in my bag. In this small green vial. Here. All right. There are two tablets in the vial, Mr. Bott. Mm. They are tasteless, odorless. Take them with water. You know their effect. Yes. What are they, Walter? Why, uh, an amatol derivative, I believe. It doesn't matter what they are, Mr. Camp. Suffice it to say, they will accomplish the desired effect. As long as I take them with water... Well, I suppose that's all. Almost. I'll be leaving. I... What did you say? I want you available when I call. See that you are available. But, Mr. Butt, couldn't you get someone else? That is it. I... It's no, really Bruce, I'm... I'm counting on your eminent reputation to smooth the way. Well, just remain in your office. I will. Oh, and Bruce, I hope you didn't do anything foolish, such as providing a dangerous overdose. No, Mr. Bott. I would have if I dared. But I don't dare. That's all. You may go. Well, goodbye, Dr. Bruce. Uh, 
Well, that should take care of everything, Joseph. Well, then, I think I know what you're up to with those tablets. And I think it can work as long as no hitch develops when you're booked. Isn't Sergeant Davis in charge of the desk at Central Station? Davis, uh, well, yes, but... Uh, oh, I know Davis is honest, but he's friendly to us. Mm-hmm. And... Yes? I see. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, don't try to stop. Yes, I want to see them. Show them. We'll soon learn how my scheme works, Joseph. Then it's... Yes, they're outside now with the warrant. Joseph, it started. Act two. The fight between Perry Mason and Walter Bott started long, long ago. Walter Bott is correct. The final battle has now begun. And as we know, this is a battle to the finish. With so many really good washing products being used, a woman has to be given a mighty good reason before she'll switch to a new one. Well, we think we can give you the best reason in the world for changing to Tide. Listen, Procter & Gamble's Tide will get your clothes cleaner than any soap, any other suds, any other washing product known. Tide leaves clothes free from dirt and more. Tide removes dingy soap film, too. Yet, with all this amazing cleaning power, Tide is truly safe for all your washable colors. In fact, Tide actually brightens soap dough colors. And in hardest water, Tide gets white things whiter than any other washing product known. So try Tide. Watch those suds billow up. Notice how different they look and feel. And see your family wash at its cleanest best. No soap, no other suds, no other washing product known will get your clothes as clean as Tide. Tide gets clothes cleaner than all of them. T-I-D-E, Tide. Perry Mason, the famous character created by Earl Stanley Gardner, is brought to you by Tide. Procter and Gamble's amazing new discovery for your whole family wash. Try Tide yourself, and you too will agree you've never used anything like it. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.